We shall now go on to our next speaker, Dr. Vanita Patar, uh, who is currently a director of glaucoma and uh, uh, cataract uh, at uh, uh, that director of glaucoma and cataract at the Center for Sight Group of uh, Hospitals at, based at Hyderabad. And she is going to take us on to a very interesting, much discussed topic, uh, GAT, and let's hear from her. Thank you very much, Dr. Chitra, and a very good evening to all of you. Um, did you notice that several talks preceding mine and several talks after mine will all are all concentrating on um, complications and side effects of trabeculectomy, and therefore uh, possibly uh, mix or minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries may have a role to play earlier on in the disease, always remembering that in our country, presentation may be late, and of course, affordab affordability may be low. Nonetheless, um, I have no disclosures here. Uh, we, you know, there will be a talk about this, but infection, blebitis, uh, this patient did well, very fortunately, but it's a blinding disease. We all know that, bleb-associated, bleb uh, but these, you know, that may not be that common, However, traps and blebs like this are pretty common earlier on in the uh, post trabeculectomy and later on post trabeculectomy you can have a variety of uh, blebs. Um, so the uh, trabeculectomy as well as glaucoma drainage devices may be the mainstay, but they, 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 the problem is that they are all subconjunctival. And a subconjunctival bleb that is formed is what unfortunately limits the function of that filtration. However successful it is in, or efficacious it is in bringing down uh, pressure. So the, the blood that is created is prone to fibrosis. So failure rate is high. And as a rough guidance, I've given you 50% at five years. And of course, there may be infection. And so the search for an ideal or a procedure with minimal side effects, minimal learning curve, repetitive results, et cetera, goes on. I'm not saying GAT is, uh, you know, has a low, uh, low learning curve, but, you know. So what is MIGS? Over the past two decades, MIGS has provided a lot lots more options in the management, especially in mild to moderate, in the spectrum of disease much early on, and is usually blebless when you com uh, uh, compare it with conventional surgery and is usually ab internal. So you utilize either the trabecular meshwork or the suprachoroidal space or the ciliary body to provide or uh, deliver your uh, mix procedure. Based on this, the broad classification is that it could be trabecular meshwork or canal based, which you can either stent or dilate, or you can do an otomy, a trabeculotomy, or you could place it in the suprachoroidal space, as I just showed you, or you could do a uh, cyclophotocoagulation. Uh, there is also a group of uh, minimally invasive, uh, which are known as MIGS plus because they form a blood and you may or may not be using mitomycin C in those scenarios. Uh, I, in our country, uh, very recently, iStent has been made available and the procedures that are done uh, uh, and have been uh, uh, being practiced are for the last few years, I would say, is the trabeculotomy procedures. For all these procedures, they are possible only when the angle is open, whereas cyclophotocoagulation is not dependent on angle status. Um, what is the advantage of mixed procedures versus uh, blood forming surgery is that it reduces surgical time, complications can be offered much earlier on in the disease, usually combined with cataract surgery and it's cosmetically more acceptable, visual recovery much faster. And from our point of view, a glaucoma specialist point of view, it does not compromise the conjunctiva at all. Of course, there's a flip side. There is only a modest reduction in IOP, and therefore, when very advanced disease, it may be its use may be limited and usually not indicated in angle closure, and it, it opens up post LPI, and cost may also be a limiting factor. With this background knowledge, let's move on to my case. Here, there is a 17 year old male. He had a history of use of unsupervised steroids and was currently on three anti-glaucoma medications in the right eye only. 
Uh, uh, on examination, his uh, best corrected visual acuity was 636 in the mm -hmm. right. It was normal in the left. Intraocular pressure was 21 in the right, 16 in the left. Angles were open. And there was mild inferior thinning and RF, RNFL change in the right eye and a, 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 a mean deviation about minus 10 in the right eye. Left eye was within normal limit. So here we had a situation of steroid induced glaucoma and cataract with vision that was compromised due to posterior subcapsular cataract and on anti glaucoma med medications, three anti glaucoma medications. So, um, what uh, I decided to do with this patient was to do, uh, um, well, actually, it was lens aspiration, not FACO, but uh, with uh, intraocular lens and a 360 degree suture trabeculotomy. Uh, under topical anesthesia. And I will take you through this procedure, but just as a background knowledge about uh, the, uh, you know, tips for performing a successful mix, all kinds of mix, is that preoperatively you have to counsel expectations. And if the patient is on antiplatelet drugs, of course, not this one, but, uh, uh, you know, older patients, then you must stop it. And you must actually undergo pre-planned, pre-procedure practice of intraoperative gonioscopy in FACO alone cases. And you must be aware of different types of intraoperative gonio lenses. You must practice this under high magnification and use a Sinsky to the trabecular meshwork just to get a feel. So the types of uh, intraoperative gonio lenses, they, these are of course direct lenses and the most common one that was being used was Schwann Jacob. And uh, <clears throat> the view you get with it uh, when you compare it to the newer lenses, I feel uh, is uh, a little um, less ideal. Uh, something which is very similar to Schwann Jacob is an open axis, I presume open axis. Uh, as you can see the design, there is a little uh, concave cutting in, in the front. The, the advantage of these two lenses are that they can be reused. However, when you look at the other lenses that are uh, available, this one is an eye prism, you can see that uh, the view, uh, the uh, appearance of the trabecular meshwork is much better. Here I'm placing an eye stent a, in a patient. This is an eye prism SX, and this gives a much wider view, en face view of the, uh, of the uh, angle structures. These are um, unfortunately a little bit more expensive and they are disposable, although I do eat of them and use them for four or five cases. The other most important thing is the positioning of the patient and the microscope, and the surgeon should be sitting temporal. Microscope positioning should be 35 degrees, so and the patient also should be positioned 35 degrees. Uh, in this fashion, you can uh, um, move the microscope towards yourself and the patient's face away from you. So here we are, move the microscope towards you, patient's face away from you. Then, uh, sorry, then you create corneal wounds which are slightly anterior to the limbus so that you can avoid bleeding and poor visualization. You can see here the little space that I have left for making the phaco wound for this particular patient. And practice intraoperative gonioscopy in phaco uh, cases, like I said, under high magnification and Sinsky to the, to the angle. As you can see here, this is just a Sinsky whoop. And I'm, uh, this is an angle closure patient whose uh, angle opened up and you can see small gonia sinici also formed. But it just gives you an idea as to how. So here, this, with this patient, uh, the procedure was completed without any complications. Uh, an initial goniotomy was done, followed by 5-0 proline cannulation of the entire Schlems canal, unroofing of the Schlems canal, uh, 360 degrees. Uh, and uh, at the time when I was performing GAT, uh, unfortunately, my microscope was not very good. So I managed to get uh, a, a very good video from a very good friend of mine, Dr. Swati Upadhyay from, from uh, Aravind Pondicherry. So I'll just fast forward it. You can see uh, the wounds being made. And you saw the tip of the proline being uh, blunted. And once the uh, patient is and the eye is positioned, you place the gonio on the, on the eye and you do a goniotomy with an MVR blade. Once you've done a goniotomy, then you grasp with the micro grasper and you uh, place the cannulate rather, the suture into the canal till it appears on the other side and you can grasp that with 
with your micrograspers and then use a McPherson's to just rip the trapecular meshwork 360 degrees. So uh, with this particular patient, I had minimal inflammation and no high femur. He achieved 2020 vision as well as control pressure without medication for, of the two and a half years follow up I have. I just want to contrast it with another male patient, 10 year old, who was a primary uh, congenital glaucoma patient who had already had a trab and trab elsewhere, was on medication, uh, three medication, and he had poor fixation because his vision was very poor, count fingers one meter only. One eyed patient, IOP was not controlled at all. And <clears throat> The factors that needed to be considered here that he's one-eyed, previous failed, not only bleb surgery, but also trabeculotomy, outstation patient and known poor compliance, and of course, cost. So mix was done in the form of GAT. Here, the modification was the surgeon position was superior. Goniato goniotomy was done inferiorly. 180 degree cannulation was first done anticlockwise, and uh, it came out of the previous trabeculotomy. So this was pulled through, and similarly, the other side was done and pulled through. This patient uh, uh, had a few blood clots postoperatively, but did not allow any observations on day one, uh, did, did not appear for the week one appointment. And when he came at one month appointment, his vision was 1.5 meters, pressure was 17, one anti-glaucoma agent was uh, added, but unfortunately since then also went uh, was lost to follow up. So what complications can you expect? Uh, you can have iris endothelial lens touch. It of course decreases with experience. You may fail to cannulate 360 degrees and hyphema can happen up to 70% of cases. And late, late post-operative period, you can get fibrosis and pass formation and a need for glaucoma filtration surgery as high as 20%. So to summarize, I would say it helps to bypass the trabecular resistance, mostly in, indicated in open angle uh, mild to moderate cases. It has the potential to be considered as the primary surgery in primary congenital glaucoma. Of course, there is extremely limited data in Indian eyes. And unlike some other rates, the monetary cost is not a limiting factor. But since uh, the last two years, I have been thinking repeatedly about this procedure and found words in an editorial by Dr. Tanuj Dada, uh, very strongly, I feel now that non-preservation of 360 degree of trabecular meshwork eliminates use of any other trabecular meshwork based drugs or procedures. And so much research is being done on the trabecular meshwork such that any future development of trabecular meshwork based drugs or procedures may be completely ruled out in patients who have undergone GAT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor uh, Doctor, for giving us some food for thought, uh, Tavanita, at the end of it. And let's take the question directly to Dr. Tanuj. Now, what would you say about, uh, since GAT is a procedure which has come in recently, uh, what do you think is the future of GAT? Would you require so, Madam, actually, I would request all of you to read their editorial. And, uh, you know, I had this uh, philosophical insight, you know, that why would mother nature place a trabecular meshwork in the eye if there was no use of trabecular meshwork? So it is there for the purpose. And if you see the molecular studies, it's not a sieve, it's an active pump mechanism available in the eye to push aqueous. Now the issue is second important thing is that recently we started doing uh, aqueous angiography and you can, we just published a study on aqueous angiography guided ab internal glaucoma surgery. And if you do aqueous angiography, you find that the venous outflow channels are very limited and mostly present in the inferior and nasal quadrant. There is no aqueous flow channel in the temporal quadrant. So it doesn't make sense to unnecessarily remove the trabecular meshwork in an area where there is no aqueous outflow channel. So I think doing 3cc degree removal of the trabecular meshwork is not a good idea for the long term. And I explain why. Because the same effect you can get with a 90 degree or a maximum 180 degree removal of trabecular meshwork. I agree. So the IOP outcome is not different if you compare 180 versus 360. So first question is never remove 360. The second important issue is young patients. 
So suppose you have a 17 year old patient and you have removed the trabecular mesh work. And supposing patient goes into physical training with sportsman or weightlifting. With Valsalva maneuver, there is a long term risk of hyphema because now trabecular mesh work is out. So anytime the epischial venous pressure goes high, you can get a delayed hyphema. And that is one of the complications that is being reported with GAT spontaneous late hyphemas. And third thing, what Dr. Sushmita said, young patients, in 10 years, you have new drugs which are working on tobacco meshwork and these patients will not have an option. And lastly, I think it is better to strip off the tobacco meshwork with a needle or a KDB or a tobectome. Why? Because you are leaving a two leaflets with GAT. So over time, these two leaflets can come back and fuse and then you have a rebound increase in IOP. That is why I am not a great fan of GAT. I believe in ab internal surgery, but a limited opening of the tobacco mesh to 90 degree and that also with a 26 gauge needle. So there is no added cost and this is only for early glaucoma and a very limited reduction in intraocular pressure is to be expected. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tanuj. Uh, but still for people who are doing GAT in the audience, uh, one uh, question I have for Dr. Shushmita, how would you manage a suture obstruction in the Schlems canal? What are the different ways you would think of addressing it? So whenever there is an obstruction, the main thing is do not keep going because usually we are doing GAT with a proline, which is essentially blind. So we stop the procedure, use a, a sterile indirect gonio lens, do the gonioscopy and see where it is. So we've had these ends of the proline come out through the iris. We've had some of them even go behind the ciliary body. So it's not such an innocuous procedure. And I would, uh, so I would request people not to keep pushing it if there is an obstruction. The best thing to do is try and strip off as much as you can from one side and re-enter from the other side if you want to really complete the, the procedure rather than keep pushing on the one end. Would you think of cutting down at that area uh, which could have got fibrosis and then go, uh, going further in the same direction? <laughs> No, I have never done that. I would maybe I'm a lazy surgeon, but I think it would, you know, add to the time of uh, surgery so much. I would just rather strip off, and it's easy to do that with your max grip forces. Strip off half of it, go in again from the other side, make another side poke, go in again from the other side, and do as much as you can. But like Tanut said, it's okay if you can't. You can always do a bang or a goniotomy of the rest of the section. You can do a bang of the rest of the angle if you really wanted to treat the rest. So you don't have to, but don't force your way through. While we are on talking on uh, bang or maybe KDB, Rash Dr. Rashmi is there uh, as one of the speakers. What would be your uh, thoughts on the current status? Yeah. Uh, honest opinion. Thanks, uh, Dr. Chitra. KDB, we have uh, used uh, in 59 and we have published the results also. So definitely like Dr. Tanujdada told, uh, just one quadrant or two quadrants of opening the Schlenz canal itself uh, decreases the pressure. But definitely in our study, we did not use uh, uh, KDB in eyes, which are high pressure. So patients who have who are on three or uh, four medication and they had cataract. So in those eyes, we had done KDB and now they're on only one medication. In fact, that one medication also we, we were using uh, because the patients had advanced glaucoma and the pressures were uh, 16 to 18. So just for the fear that it should not go up, we continued on one medication. But uh, definitely KDB or like BANG itself works well. 360 degree goniotomy uh, need, may not be required in all patients. So in whom, where the suture gets obstructed in between, if you just rip off uh, at the place where it is getting obstructed and not trying to uh, cannulate further and causing trauma to the adjacent structures itself is beneficial. So I think just in one quadrant, whatever view is available of that gonio, uh, gonio uh, lens, if that much of trabecular meshwork is opened also, the IOP reduction happens and definitely the number of AGM reduction will happen. Uh, I just add, sorry, can I just add that KDB actually is not available in India. We should not get that idea. It is not approved by DGCI, um, uh, uh, Kahook Jewel Blade. Uh, these are only procured ad hoc 
uh, and of course adds to the cost of surgery. So now wherever uh, a trabeculotomy is what I am planning for a patient and I like to do uh, a, a, a bank trabeculotomy as we said we are not adding to the cost uh, we are well versed with uh, the positioning of the patient positioning of the microscope as well as with um, intraoperative gonioscopy so uh, actually bang is working extremely well uh, not that i have published but i will publish soon and in patients where um, i feel there is uh, affordability i would actually preserve the trabecular meshwork even more and i would do uh, eye stent or eye stent inject uh, in fact i have uh, four cases coming up tomorrow but only in those patients where, of course, there is affordability. And uh, to add to this, I will just say that uh, at least here now, right now, it is completely covered by insurance, totally reimbursable by insurance. Uh, Dr. Shailesh, I'm going to go on to the next. Yeah,